Uh, for brass or iron, it doesn't matter. The process is same. Uh, we have Q1. Let's define as Q1. We have the only change of temperature, not the change of phase. So we use the equation for heat, which shows or implies the change of temperature. Q is equal to M of B, mass of brass or iron, doesn't matter. The specific heat of iron or brass and the, the change of temperature. So as you see, if you have brass, for example, with temperature of uh, first, it was around 100 degree, and then it's changed to 33 degree, okay? So here only the, the temperature changed, not the phase. So we use this equation, and for water as well, we only change uh, the temperature, not the phase. So Q1 and Q2 is related to the change of temperature of water. It's a Q2 for water. We use mass of water, C of water, and delta T, which this delta T is T final minus T initial. You can write this to as Q1 and Q2, or which Q, which is lost by uh, the Mm, water is gained by, uh, sorry, for brass, it's gained by water. Or for iron, it's gained by water. Then you can write it in this form. If you substitute instead of Q1 and Q2, these two equations, and arrange it because our unknown is C of brass. You will see this equation. This equation is equation number 1.6 of your manual. You can see it. I wrote it in this form by purpose to show you this CB by mistake is extra, you have to cancel it. And then because it's written on the manual in this form. Then you can define CB implies brass or you can use for uh, iron as I. Okay? For iron, which in the first part we did it for iron. So I just put it I and we can write instead of mass of brass, mass of iron. If you substitute your data, which you defined in the table, the first table in the SI unit, uh, in this equation, you will define the C of iron. And uh, for example, here you need the C, a specific heat of water. A specific heat of water is written here in the manual. You can find it. It's 4,186. With the SI units, you can substitute and define the C of iron. Okay, what is the aim? If you check the manual, in the last page, it's written the exact and the real value of a specific heat of iron and brass. Okay, see, the real value or a specific heat of iron is 438 joule per kilogram. Suppose you define with your data and with your measurement C iron as, let's say, 421 joule per kilogram, okay? Now, we want to compare these two values as error percentage, which is your last table and last A. Okay, how can I define it? According to the equation of error percentage, I want to see how accurate was my experiment and my measurement. I say the absolute value of experimental one minus theoretical one, or sometimes we say experimental one minus real value, it doesn't matter, divided by theoretical one. What is this theoretical one? The theoretical one is the real one. So this is the theoretical value and this is the experimental value. I define this value by experiment, but this is the real value for a specific heat of iron. Then you can define in this one. Uh, I will continue here. The experimental one, 421 minus 438 in absolute value divided by 438. Okay, let's define it to see how much is it. Okay. 
and I forgot to write here 100 percentage times 100 percentage. is 3.8 percentage. This is the error of my experiment, 3.8 percentage, okay? This absolute value makes our result positive. It doesn't matter which value comes first. At the end, we expect a positive value for our uh, result. Okay, we must do exactly the same process for brass, okay? Only the last, uh, the last part, the C of brass, according to the value which is given in your manual, is 380, and you have to write uh, 380 instead of the specific heat of brass, and define yours, and uh, do the calculation again. That's it, okay? And all the processes are same. But the last part, now it wants to repeat the experiment for the other material as brass, okay? Uh, so again, we need the initial temperature and the mass of water. So let's define it. Again, I will put the container to measure the mass. I want to ignore it, let's make it zero. So then I add water. The mass of water is 151.1 gram. 151.1 times 10 to the power of minus 3 kilogram. Then, temperature, initial temperature of water. Okay, it's changing. I'm waiting to see the fixed value. It's still increasing. It's around 28.5. 28.5 degree. Okay, then so as you see, I'm just filling the uh, brass table. Okay, the mass of brass, the, the uh, temperature of the sorry, the mass of water, the temperature of water, and then let's define the mass of brass. I will put it here. Again, make it zero. Okay. I want to do it fast to reduce our error. It's the mass of the brass is 97.7. .7. Mass of brass, 97.7 .7 gram. I multiply it by 10 to the power of minus 3 to convert it to kilogram. Okay. Now, so the water is boiling. The initial temperature of the brass is 100 degree. Then we should wait for the final temperature of the mixture of brass and water. So we should wait, it's 41.1, 39.2, 37, it's decreasing. It's still changing, 32.
31.9 is a fixed value, 31.9 degree. This is the final temperature of our brass and water. So we want to define, as it's written in the manual, the specific heat capacity of brass is Three hundred eighty. Okay, it's for brass, and then you feel you will define yours. Let's say, for example, three hundred eighty. Then just substitute instead of experimental value and theoretical divided by theoretical times one hundred to define the percentage error and fill the last table, okay? Uh, in this experiment, we finished to define the specific heat capacity of brass and iron. Uh, in the next step, we will go to define the latent heat of ice, okay? Thank you. In this part, we need ice to define the latent heat of ice. Uh, so we have ice here, then Let's check our table to see what parameter is necessary to measure. Uh, first is the mass of water and the initial temperature of water. We suppose the initial temperature of ice is zero, so we suppose it's, uh, uh, it, it's okay. Then the mass of water, again, we use this container, make it zero. Add water. Instead of iron or brass, here we have ice. Okay. First, the mass of water is 151.8 times 10 to the power of minus 3 kilogram. Okay. The next parameter is the initial temperature of water. Then... When I say the next parameter, it doesn't uh, mean that I'm just going in order as it's written in the table. No, because if I mix it, then I, I cannot define the initial one. So I prefer to first measure the initial temperature of water, then define the uh, mass of ice. Okay. Should wait 250 degree. 250.9, uh, sorry, 26, 27.2, 27.6, 28, okay, 29, it's increasing, 29.9 Okay, the initial temperature of water is fixed on 30.1 The initial temperature of water degree Then we have the initial uh, tem uh, temperature of ice is zero as written in the table and then we need the mass of ice, okay. So let me put it again here to measure the mass of ice. I made it zero, then let me add by hand. It's 20 gram, 20.4 gram. It's 20.4 times 10 to the power of minus 3 kilogram. Now we have mass of water, mass of ice, the initial temperature of both uh, water and ice. Then we should wait for the final temperature.
is changing 18.9, 19 point1 18.9 is the final temperature 18.9 degree okay now we have all parameters. Let's go to define the latent heat of ice. For defining the latent heat, uh, so uh, we have three different heat, uh, or let's say three different steps. First, ice melts from zero degree to water zero degree. Here we have uh, the change of phase. So we use Q1 is M of ice, it's mass of ice, times latent heat, which is our unknown. And then for Q2, we have only the change of temperature. So I use for Q, M of ice, because this mass is related to the mass of ice, C of water, because here we have only water, and the change of temperature, final temperature minus zero. And then for water, we have uh, just the change of temperature, which I uh, just call it Q3, mass of water, which we have it, the uh, specific heat of water, and delta T. Then, if you rearrange it and write it for defining the LF, you will see this equation just by substituting, you can define LF. The real value of LF, according to the uh, manual, it's written, 333,000 joule per kilogram, which you will define yours, and at the end you uh, must define the error percentage as well. As you see here, we complete the table or fill the table for iron. We converted the parameters which they rent in the SI units, for example, gram in kilogram, and then for brass, then for ice, okay? Then you will write your values, your data here, and defining and comparing your value uh, with the real ones and defining the error percentage for us.